When you select an object, there's all kinds of little symbols that appear that'll help you know what you can do with this object. So if you know what those symbols are, it'll really help you uh, so that you don't accidentally stretch something when you're trying to move it, etc. So again, I'm going to select just by dragging my lasso all the way around. Now the first thing we want to do is to just simply move an object. And to move an object, you have to wait until these crosshairs appear. When you actually move your cursor over a line, you'll see that you get some crosshairs. And once you have those crosshairs, you could simply drag all over the place. It shows a preview as it's dragging. And that way you're not going to accidentally resize it or rotate it or do anything else. So let me deselect by tapping on it. And the next thing we're going to look at is the scale function. To scale the drawing, which means to basically resize it either horizontally or vertically or proportionally, you're going to be using one of these boxes that is around the object. And to scale, first of all, in proportion, if you go up to one of the corners and you see a diagonal stretch, uh, diagonal two-headed arrow, then you can use that to distort from a diagonal perspective. But if you actually want to scale it and keep it in proportion, hold the shift key down while you do it. And then you'll get a drawing that scales in perfect proportion to what you were doing. That's pretty consistent throughout the program to use the shift key for things like getting straight lines straight or circles to be perfect circles all the time. You can use the handles on the side of the selection box to scale it skinnier or to scale it wider. Or if you want to keep everything in proportion as you scale again, press the shift key as you move in or as you move out. You can use those handles on the top and the bottom of the selection bounding box also if you want to scale it vertically by squishing it down. If you want to scale it I'm vertically by making it taller, you can stretch it back up. But if you want to move the drawing in perfect proportion, press and, shift, press and hold the shift key and then drag downward to make it smaller and drag upward to make it bigger, still retaining all of the scale of the original. We've seen before how you can rotate uh, your selection by going over to the tool properties and choosing to rotate it by 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and of course you can do that multiple times. But if you want to rotate at a freehand angle, of course any angle that you want, you can also do that by selecting your drawing and then moving your cursor up toward one of the outer corners, whether it's the upper corner or the lower corner. But the best way to find that rotating handle is to go to just the outside of one of the corners. And you'll be able to use this tool by pressing down and dragging to rotate your object at any angle you desire. If you'd like to be really precise when you're rotating your object, you can hold down the shift key and then drag and rotate and your object will rotate in clicks of 15 degrees so that you can know exactly how much it's rotating which can be helpful if you have to rotate a number of different objects make sure that they're all rotated exactly the same. I'd also like to demonstrate how we can change the pivot point of that rotation but to do that I'm going to first shrink this drawing by again going over to the scalable corner, scalable corner, and I held down the shift key so that it scaled in perfect proportion. And so now when I select the item, I'm going to be able to rotate it, but rather than rotating from the center as it is right now, I'd like to move the pivot point so that it's rotating from the nose, for example. So watch the difference. Now he's rotating from his nose. Well, how did I do that? I'm going to show you. Now by default, the pivot point is right smack in the middle of whatever selection that you've chosen. And the pivot point is this little white dot that's right in the middle of your bounding box. And watch as I move closer and closer to it. That's the moving 
uh, symbol if I wanted to move it. And that's the lasso selection tool. But if I get close to that pivot point, now I get a move tool that says P on it. And so I can move that over now to like the end of his nose or even just outside of his nose. So you can see that little dot has moved over there. And now when I rotate this object, it's going to rotate. I'm dragging and it's going to rotate around that specific pivot point. And that could be really, really useful for arms and other things when you want them to rotate from the joint uh, rather than from the center of the object. One more thing you can do with the selection tool and that bounding box is to skew a drawing, which is something that's probably not done as often, but watch as the cursor then changes to an up and down arrow alongside the bounding box. And then if I drag along that, it distorts the drawing in a skewed fashion. I can also do that horizontally if you want to move something at a forward angle or a backward angle, you can grab that skew line and drag it back. And every time that I you see me snap it back to the normal, I'm just hitting the undo key. So for example, those are up here. Here's the redo key and here's the undo key. And I'm also happy to be doing it on my keyboard, which is uh, control Z or command Z on a Mac. There's also a perspective tool nearby that acts a lot like the other distortion tools in the select tools. So the select tool is right up front, shares its space with the cutter, but right next to it, typically you'll see the contour editor. And if you press and hold, you'll have access to the perspective lasso, the perspective tool. And if you drag that around an object, now you have a, a little bit different experience when you drag from the corners now you have quite a bit more distortion and so you can really stretch things out you can bring in the ends here and it's a really great tool for distorting things and also distorting things in perspective